firefighter Dan Fleming has a very different world. It's a world of shadows and shapes where vision is murky and nothing is distinct. A world where his brain will be stretched to the limits as it struggles to build a picture with a few visual clues he can make out in the smoke filled darkness. What is the house's layout? Where is the source of the fire? And are there any survivors? It takes 30 minutes for our eyes to optimise their night vision capabilities. But when they do, they're able to detect the light from a single candle at a distance of 14 miles. You try to find bits and pieces of light to help you find your way through. But it's our rod cells in our peripheral vision that do it best, and they only register black and white. Dan needs to see in colour because he's looking for a fire. It was very faint at first. I thought to myself, that must be the, the seat of the fire. Very orange glow, and it's really orange. With the fire detected, Dan must now tackle the source of the flames. To my surprise, it went out very quickly. And I started scanning around to see what else was in that room. Whenever you can get glimpses, that's so important. But I'm taking the whole room in as I'm scanning. It's a detective story, with clues being assembled inside Dan's head. From tiny fragments of visual data, his brain reasons what must be there, even though he cannot see it. It's what our brains do all the time. A white glint is a cup of coffee. Black and white squares are partially completed crossword. To Dan Fleming's experienced eyes, these are all signs that someone could still be in the house. It's then that Dan Fleming sees something. But my initial instinct was, there's something on the couch, I'm not sure what it was. I'm not the vacuum. We have a say, when in doubt, check it out. And that's what I did. Hey, Cal, Cal, give me a hand, I got a victim. Get the guardian here, guys. Hey, be careful, be careful. Despite all the difficulties, Dan Fleming has used his brain's visual power to help save a man's that's life. 